2016. But long before I was able to travel to Africa, there was a missionary by the name of Sister Miriam Therese Winter, a Catholic medical missionary who came to the campus of Duke University and she shared with us one of her missionary trips to Africa. And she shared that when she went to the certain village in Africa, she talked about what she noticed among the women of that village. The one of the things she noticed that all of these women did, they were involved in manual labor. They were involved in gathering wood, carrying water for cooking and washing, cleaning throughout the village. But what she noticed that day, most of all, that all women spent their day with their heads towards the earth. They were bent over gathering twigs for fire. They were bent over the rocks, washing their clothes down by the river. They were bent over cooking pots, preparing meals for their families. They were bent over gathering straw to make brew, to sweep their dirt for huts. They were sweeping the village all day long with their heads towards they were bent over all day long. And like these women, many women and men in our society throughout the world have been crippled by an adversarial spirit. A spirit of gender bias or discrimination where women are concerned that keep many of them bent and bound.
began to look at them differently. But in our text, it says that on the Sabbath, Jesus was there teaching, and a certain woman comes into the fellowship. A certain woman comes into the synagogue on the Sabbath, and Jesus is there teaching. It's, it's not like having, quote unquote, that visiting preacher to come when the pastor is there. But Jesus began to notice this woman as she comes in to honor God on the Sabbath and to bring not only her gifts, but to worship God in truth and in spirit. My friend, I think sometimes we don't honor the Sabbath like we ought to, and I, and I don't really kind of get called the part left. We don't take the time to stop and rest and honor God with the gift of life that God has given us. Because Sabbath is a time for us to stop all the busy days. To rest and to worship God, to honor God as we remember the goodness of God throughout the week, how God has blessed us to be here. Some of you use the excuse this morning. I forgot to set my clock ahead. So if you excuse, well, the coronavirus is to be anywhere. And so they use an excuse and forget about the goodness and the grace of God. It's a time not just remembering, but also celebrating the great joy. to please. 
he's gone here of a woman who comes to the household of God on the Sabbath to celebrate the God who is our Alpha and our Omega, our beginning and our end, our joy and sorrow. Our hope not only for tomorrow, but our hope today. She knew this God of peace, this God of love, for she was a woman walking by faith and not just by sight. She was a woman who continually saw the Lord, even though she was crippled and bent. But she was not broken in her spirit, for she realized that we must walk by faith and not just by sight or circumstance. For even Jesus said she is the daughter of Abraham. And the word of God said, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as morning? Do we have the kind of faith this morning that no matter what our circumstance, we will continue to walk by faith and never give up on God? Though her condition of circumstances had a crippled and bent, but she was not broken. She kept making her way daily, daily, 18 long years. And I'm quite sure back in the day that she was living, I'm quite sure that her status as a woman will diminish in a society really run by men. I'm quite sure her dignity was put on the test almost every day. You know how it is when you don't get invited to the party that everybody else gets invited to. You know how it is when sometimes you're the brunt of cruel jokes. Nobody ever called to take you out on a date. No one ever spent time with you. No one is walking beside you as a daily companion. But she does not succumb to the spirit of fear. She kept walking. She kept trusting. She kept believing. She kept leaning on God's goodness and mercy. And so, church, I invite us to remember this woman has faith in God, who is the way, he, who is the truth, who is the life. But God is still a way maker. This woman has faith in God, who love and mercy endures forever. Even though we may face circumstances in our lives that sometimes we feel we've been crippled because we are black, because we are female, because we are men. Sometimes we all get bent out of shape because of the circumstances we're living in. But thanks be to God we are not broken. Because this woman shows us that no matter how things go in our lives, keep trusting the Lord with all your heart and stop leaning to your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge God and God shall direct thy path. And my friend, as I look at this text, it reminds me of the countless women that I've known in my own life and many who I've not known who have been crippled by an adversarial spirit, sometimes spiritually, emotionally, Physically, economically, politically, well, you know what happened this week. There's only two generations. I'm not one woman nowhere. But yet, in 2016, a woman won a popular vote, but is not pregnant. Even the Electoral College, they had the authority to elect her. Three million more than 45. But because of a system put together mostly by white men, many women still are politically crippled. Sometimes bent by subordination of their status, exploited because of their bodies and their minds. Sometimes oppressed and injustice begin to fill their lives. I'm reminded of many women in my own family who have a bear the brother 
many abuses of all kinds, from men as well as women. Because I've seen it all, my friends. I've seen women who stayed with men who had two or three women on the side, mm. who loved them in spite of them. Yeah. I've seen women who were abused by other women coming to the house. Beauty. 
beauty of this text for me. Jesus didn't wait until the next day. We don't do that to a church house. He called the woman over and says, Woman, thou art blue, thou art set free from the your ailment. Do we have the kind of compassion that sees that come to the rescue of those who are going through those crippling moments in their lives? Do we have the kind of compassion where we stop, we serve and stay, and even spend the night? If you remember, if you go back in the 10th chapter of Luke, you find that Jesus Christ was approached by a lawyer. He said, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus, the great teacher, turned the question back on him. What does the scripture say? He said, well, to love the law like God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. But this time, the church person, he wanted to justify it. Oh, oh, who is my name? And Jesus told this parable, many of you know the parable, which we call for the good Samaritan. But if you read a little further back, in the ninth chapter of Luke, the disciples wanted to burn down the Samaritan village. And so, we call it a good Samaritan, but there were those in the crowd who hated the Samaritan. And Jesus began to tell the story about this a man who fell low feet and robbed and was left for dead. In other words, a man who had been crippled by violence and left for dead. And yet, come along with priest, someone from the church, come along, a good church person, a good leader, maybe a good teacher comes along. But it says priest, probably the preacher. <laughs> and then but he looked and then he looked at the other side. And then the Levite comes along. He sees, he looks and he goes to the other side. And then a Samaritan from that hated village comes along. Not only did he see, but he stopped. Not only did he stop, but he bandaged his wounds. He was able to go and serve this person who was hurting. And not only did he see, not only did he stop, not only did he stir, but he stayed with them until the next day. And then he was willing to spend whatever it took, even when it But Sometimes, even in the life of the church, we will spend money on all kinds of things and won't we'll spend it on people that we know are hurting. But Jesus had a spirit of compassion. And in all of our brokenness, let us remember that Christ is the part of the lies that Isaiah talks about. No matter how broken we may think we are, he can put us back together again. Though we may find ourselves triple bent, but not quite yet broken, God can put us back together. But Jesus teaches us to come unto him and say, All who are labored and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon yourself and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Teach us all the same word and the same spirit that you have. A spirit of compassion that we're willing to love and set those free who have been held captive by adversarial spirits. Speak a living word to us, O God, that it may discern the thoughts and the intentions of our hearts. Speak to teach us, O God, a word that we may meditate on it both day and night. Because there are many around us, O oh God, who find themselves triple bent but not quite yet broken. Teach us, God, to speak to our afflictions and our firmities. <laughs> speak a word of healing, God, because, Lord God, we need your healing touch. Speak to our hearts, God, that we may be set free to set others free. 
So often, as long as we've got ours, we don't worry about anybody else's. But Christ reminded us that even on the Sabbath, we're called to set people free. And Lord, speak to us that you spoke to them all, that we might be able to stand up straight for holiness. Speak to us those words, God, that woman, thou art new, man, you are set free. Speak to us, Lord, that we might stand straight for justice, not just for us. Speak to us, Lord, to your sons and your daughters, that we all may be able to stand on the up straight, not only for righteousness, but for your name's sake. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Listen. I just stopped by to praise God this morning. As I think about all the women that God has put in my life, when I think about Yeah. 